that, that, that nonviolent intervention has tremendous potential. Uh, I happen, maybe it's my military background, maybe it's what I've studied or looked or whatever, but I think that there may be a way uh, to intervene with strict self-defense limitations. Uh, because I also think that, that a lot of these folks that are committing these atrocities are cowards. So that if the force arrives and doesn't attack anybody, or just says, you know, we're going to deliver humanitarian assistance, thank you very much, uh, that a lot of that's going to get through. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I want. I want uh, assistance as big. But there's a perfectly legitimate point of view that says you cannot have violence. There's no way to constrain the military. And, and peacekeeping cannot have a military component. Mm -hmm. I think that's the gist of it. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that it? Yes, sure. Well, I think it's more than that, but I think you can leave it there. That, that's, that's good enough for the responsibility. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes? Uh, you've done a good rundown on Mali, but I'd like to add a couple of uh, points to it. Um, I went over the casualty statistics for this month in Mali, and they've been caused by no less than a dozen armed groups. Um, and with that many actors, there's no way that you can have consent and impartiality in that situation. You've got at least two different flavors of Islamists, the ones who are connected with Al-Qaeda, the ones who are connected with ISIS, and then you've got a whole variety of local actors. And most of those groups came up post Libya. That's where they weaponized from. That's where all their arms came from. Mm. And where did those arms come from? The air war. And Canada specifically targeted arsenals. Now, that would seem like a good idea. You bomb the arsenal, all the weapons are destroyed. Wrong. That's not what happens. What you do is you break open the arsenal. You do destroy some weapons with that bomb, but you scatter them all over the place. <laughs> and now you have buildings that you can't lock. <laughs> so the weapons end up in Mali. Oh, well, the weapons are uh, something that's a trade item. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of people who've just become impoverished. I had a direct experience with this situation in relation to the Canadian forces in Kandahar in Afghanistan where um, there was some former general who wrote an article in the newspaper here saying oh, all those NGOs were very um, uh, upset about anti-personnel landmines. Why aren't they complaining when IEDs are blowing up Canadian soldiers in Kandahar? And it fell to my task to write a comeback to that article. And I wrote a long one explaining what happened. There was an arsenal outside of Kandahar that was bombed, and all the weapons were scattered around. And we had lobbied for a role for the Canadian forces to get rid of all of that explosive hazard. The Canadian forces never did that. Mm -hmm. But the Taliban came in and hired the local people who had no jobs at all to harvest the explosives, mm -hmm. and they would put it out on the roads where the Canadian forces drove by every day and blew them up. Um, I explained all of this in the article in the newspaper here in Canada, a good uh, journal of note, said your, your, your explanation is too long, and they cut it down to, I do, the general doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think most, but many of you know Yeshua. Yeshua is an international peace diplomat, to make it short. He's with Mines Action Canada, was very active in that. Uh, that uh, treaty, which is a successful and uh, non-violence international, I don't know the names of the groups, but he travels the world. He's a member of uh, Vancouver Island Peace and Disarmament Network, and uh, and I was and a, a, a friend and colleague, and he just came in from Asia and was very jet lagged, but I'm glad he's here oh, wow. because because I wanted uh, if I was going to say something really wrong, I want to correct it. <laughs> right away, because I defer to, uh, to Yeshua's expertise. So, uh, please and, keep, you know, yes. And I, I didn't get the title of this um, course that you're, pla you're thinking of, of, for peacekeeping, the training and so on. Oh, I, I, I have a name for it, uh, but I just, you know, I just picked out a, a name that was, uh, that was, what was it, the uh, uh, Canadian Training Center for, oh, the UN Training Center for Humanitarian Peacekeeping, run by Canada. 
with all that expertise I talked about uh, for far too long about discretionary stuff on the ground, when to hold them, when to fold them, how to deal with hostile forces, how, how not to have the peacekeepers commit uh, humanitarian violations if they are that, and what self-defense and impartiality really mean if anything is going to be uh, meaningful. So yeah. that's what I'd call it, and I may that may be the next thing I try well, to raise. Do you envisage where it might be? Yeah. Um, do you envisage it uh, at some university in Canada or states or? Yeah, I would I would uh, think that it would be located physically in Canada and that it would have, uh, universities have uh, programs abroad of all types. That's right. And so why not make that a, make that, make, why not make that a component? Uh, I mean, that could be it. a it would just be, uh, everything I look at from the time I started with this book research or whatever is to remind myself that this is comparative. Mm -hmm. How would this be compared to what is going on now? Not how would this be you know, ultimately great or perfect or whatever, but what's the choice between this and what's going on now? Mm -hmm. and, and comparatively speaking, if Canada did nothing else but run, but, but run this training center, mm -hmm. that would be better than what they propose to start doing now. Yeah. So we need to run this as a, um, you know, as a campaign? To, to try and push this forward? Well, there's... All the organizations... The agenda's crowded. Peace? I don't know. The agenda of people is crowded. Oh, I know it is. Uh, oh, yeah, and yes. so, you know, I don't know. I have to, we just have to... We have, we have to well, it's the, it's the seed. We have a small, the, brilliant, active peace community. You're part of it. Uh, it's the so seed what's of what's most something. important to you? Yeah, but it's the seed. The seed is planted. Yes, perhaps, you that's know. what I want to do. Yeah, I yeah. have some other ideas for seed planting that Yeshua and I are talking yeah. about mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, as well. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I know. Know. Listen, I'm very I'm sorry. sorry. The clock is running. It's, it's a great yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah. Well, uh, if I understand you correctly, you're suggesting that uh, peacekeeping evolve to a non-military body. No, not necessarily. That's one view. I'm, I'm saying that there may be a role for a peacekeeping contingent with a military component. Okay, I don't see in the near future any government, Canada or otherwise, being persuaded to accept the limitations that such a force would require, in my view. But I think it's possible. Uh, the, the idea of the training center is an alternative. We don't need to face those tough questions of, of military force uh, if we decide, well, what we're going to give to the world is everything we've learned before, and we're going to run a training center. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you, by the way. I'm glad to see someone from the legal community <laughs> uh, decided to drop by today, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Uh, thank you. We have, uh, I said, we've got pop. If you don't have a copy of the book and you want a copy of the book, surprise, surprise, I brought some. But, um, but I'm just uh, delighted. Elizabeth and I are going around Canada trying to preach the message of gradual disengagement from the U.S. in various aspects. This is just one of them. And I've had the honor to speak to, oh, close a hundred more and more people. But we also took the trolley out to the end of the line to York University and spoke three. to three people. Oh. So oh. I'm delighted. Oh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. If you got if you want to hear more of this or something else, there are cards here that have my contact information on the back of them that Sam has prepared for me. I, I just wanted to say since I've gotten to know you over the last year or so, Bill, you you come with kind of a, quite a unique perspective. I mean, I'm a Canadian, and I spend my life in simple life. Um, but your experience coming from the United States, having been serving in their military, and um, I, I'm quite curious as to your take on how how things can work out better. I mean, I I just am so appalled with our dynamics right now and the, the whole war machinery is gearing up again and I just don't I, I mean that uh, that's why I like to hear your take because you've, you've lived it 
and also Joshua, his experiences in the world. But for the average person, they don't have sweet, really, they're not giving it a whole lot of attention. And we're going through quite a crisis period right now. And it's important that more people hear what you have yes. to say from your perspective. Yeah. And particularly since you've actually served in one of these. Well, on that stage, not just mine, but Mary Wynn and Yeshua and others here that I don't even yes. know or recognize. But I will say this uh, the guidance for me. It, 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 well, I can't tell you how or what the form. I can keep doing this and anything else that that I think is important to me. But but I think what a lot of us do or try to do is get up every day and figure. All right, I got 24 hours mm -hmm. here. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see the world as it really is. I don't want. I want to face reality. I don't want to go dancing around in some greater uh, visionary thing. And then I want to decide uh, what I would like to see advanced in the next 24 hours. And then I will decide what I can do today to move that a bit. So the answer for everybody is going to be different. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I will uh, share. Can I just add one thing yeah. about that? Because as we were driving in, we were listening to the radio. And there was a discussion, and I'd already told Bill this morning where uh, Bill and I have the privilege of, we're Canadians, we consider ourselves Canadians, but we have the privilege of still paying taxes in the United States because <laughs> they assume that no one in their right mind would ever give up U.S. citizenship and so they claw back for 10 years. That's another matter, so we get to do it. So I still vote and I still say things, but what is happening? I was so outraged last night about the detention and separation of children and infants from their yes. mothers oh, yes. that is happening in the United States, if we do not stand up and say that is not and should not be done in my name, and it's not going to be, then there's something wrong, I believe, with each of us. We have to do something. I mean, when I heard a story of a two-year-old little girl who was crying uncontrollably and banging her head on the wall because she didn't know why her mother wasn't there. The damage that is being done to these children is possibly irreparable. It certainly would take many, many years to get over. So I'm, I'm just saying that, that for me, I just said, the lack of moral compass, the lack of that, you know, the line has been drawn, and so, you know, so I wrote my U.S. Senator, and nothing is going to be done about it, but at least, you know, I was able to say, you're not doing this in my name any longer. So anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Had to have a little rant to get the blood flowing. Well, it, it's, it, it's tough in our house <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes. And I, uh, uh, see, Elizabeth can be my witness, I have not come to this kind of hyperbole about the United States either quickly or easily. Mm. Uh, I mean, when I started this you know, last year when, you know, when the book came out, I knew enough to want can my adopted country to get free of this bad stuff. But I had no idea, and I do not hesitate now to say that the United States is the most dangerous country in the world, that it is a thoroughly corrupt police state, mm -hmm. and that the big job we have as Canadians because we know so many good, decent Americans, and we're so close, that, is that we just have to get our heads around beginning that separation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, can be done is never, never to let, it's like racism, anti-gay stuff, never let uh, a remark pass mm -hmm. that is hateful or cruel or supports that kind of policy. We don't have to rant. We don't have to uh, get combative, but we cannot remain silent. Mm -hmm. Say no. Mm -hmm. Are you really supporting uh, people who divide families? Mm -hmm. uh, and and as a lawyer, I think the way to do that is by asking questions, not by mm -hmm. by saying whatever. Just say, no, tell me more about. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you see any connection between what you've just said and division of families, or mm -hmm. uh, or whatever? Uh, but not to remain silent. That's that's to engage one thing people. not to do. Engage people. It's this stuff that people don't want to talk about. It. I know. No. I don't, well, that's part. Of, that's part of the whole thing about 
appealing to who we think we are. You know, yeah. we're not war-loving people. We don't, you know, we're, <laughs> well, it drives me crazy. It keeps us both up, uh, up at night. We love, the many things we love about being Canadian, one of the things that we don't love so much is just the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Just a quick question to Elizabeth uh, about the, uh, <clears throat> the that uh, separation of uh, refugee um, children from moms and stuff. Yeah, that, is, that, that was a pretty much a, a, a Trump-driven thing, wasn't it? Yes, uh, absolutely. That and Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, yeah. is uh -huh. the one that was writing this and spouting the Bible yeah. all while saying that this should be done. So it's just not my idea of religion. So. And even the, even the friendly press in the United States has some of this wrong. Because they say yeah. this is a zero tolerance policy for people who come into the United States illegally. Well, not quite right. If you present yourself at a port of entry and say, I'm making a claim to, a, to your obligation under international law to protect mm -hmm. refugees, you have not entered the country illegally. Uh, so I, I really wish even our friends in the press would get some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're supposed to have a hearing about that mm -hmm. legitimate so. and have a court adjudicate and decide whether you are correct in your claim or not. Right. But also the separation of 50, 60 days. Mm -hmm. They don't even know. They're just saying, well, we don't really know how long we've been housing these children away from their parents. We, are, we came here in 2000. 2000. We did not know how smart we were. <laughs> we had no idea how, how smart we were. Uh, so, folks, don't forget, if you, if, you, if you want to be involved at all with VIPDN, any of the upcoming events, uh, any ideas that you have, just say, well, I can't come to the meeting, but what about this? Yeah. Just there's a way to contact us through a general email account, right? Uh, VIPDN at VIPDN at gmail.com. Uh, you can ask questions about who we are, what we're doing, you can give ideas, and, and we will uh, try to just begin that step of getting people's attention. Quick corrections that VIPDN.org at gmail.com. Oh, I'm oh. pretty sure that's the one. VIPDN. Or you can find it on VIPDN.org. VIPDN.org will lead you to, how I, <laughs> to, the, uh, to the email account. Okay. Well, uh, this is uh, pretty much it for me. Uh, there are other great programs going on uh, this summer that the IPDN is sponsored. I'm going to be able to speak. At, if you have friends in Toronto, let me make a commercial. Well, since you're all time, I told you you could leave a long time Toronto, ago, since you're still here. In Toronto, there is an organization with some resources and some uh, really good ideas uh, in the States uh, called World Beyond War. Dot org. Uh, and I did a radio interview with them they, uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, they're pretty well organized and growing in the States, and they want to grow in Canada. And boy, do I ever want them to grow in Canada. So they're, uh, uh, they're ha they have an annual conference, and for the first time, the annual conference is going to be in Canada. It's going to be in Toronto, the 22nd of September. Uh, I'm one of three people from VIPDN who will be speaking. There are 17 or 18 other uh, speakers. The uh, uh, woman that uh, Mary Wynn is associated with on crossing the DMZ is I'm going to be uh, uh, house guest. Yeah. She and I are going to be house guests <laughs> at someone else's place. So there's going to be a wealth of information at this uh, thing. So I would just say uh, go on and check world, worldbeyondwar.org and you'll see uh, the outline of this conference. It's a long way from here to Toronto, but if you know people, if you can go, or if you know people in the Toronto area, then that's one way maybe to get some attention to, uh, uh, to this movement. So, uh, let's be Coming all the way from Sioux. All the way from Sioux. Yeah. Want a book? You don't have a book? Go get a book.